Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Mike and my amateur radio call sign is M0XMX. Today um, we're going to be looking at a couple of subjects. I get asked uh, questions sometimes that I think a lot of us as amateurs take for granted and uh, we kind of think well everybody knows that now. But I think sometimes we all forget that there's new people coming into the hobby um, all the time. So uh, I think it's always good to cover off the basics. So today I'm going to cover off um, what is an SWR meter and how do we test the SWR. Uh, and also uh, a little bit later I'm going to be looking at the, um, the end-fed half-wave antenna that I was playing with uh, recently. So there you go, a few things to do, um, so let's get cracking. So uh, I'm going to be using the 991 today. Um, I'm going to power it slightly differently to what I do normally. So I'm going to be powering it from this, which is actually, um, you may have seen this before if you've watched some of my videos, it's a LifePo 4 battery, 12 volts. Uh, 12 amp hours as well and it's uh, it's remarkably light so I'm going to be powering that and as you'll see I always use power poles so uh, that's going to be powering that I fixed the microphone so the uh, the episode that um, that happened to me a, a few weeks ago where I did a video and I had no um, no audio transmission uh, that's fixed um, down here we can see that we've got the feeder we've got the 49 to 1 unum that we used last time We've got the, um, the wire that's cut to roughly 10 metres, which is uh, half wave on 20 metres. And my box of bits, which uh, as you know I carry with me everywhere. So in here we've got the antenna analyzer, we'll be using that shortly. In, this is the uh, SWR meter that we're going to be using. Um, this is available under various different brand names, but um, yeah, this is the one I'm going to be using. And we've got a dummy load, so this is really nothing more than a a resistor. Uh, this will present 50 ohms to the radio so we can demonstrate that as well. Right okay let's just show you what I've been doing. So um, let's just go to the back of the radio. So this lead here, the one with the red around it, on the back of the SWR meter it goes off to the, uh, the socket that's called TX. So that's the transmitter. So that goes off down there to the back of the transmitter which is the antenna socket for two meters as you can see there okay the other one which is this one here this goes off to the dummy load so as I say this is nothing more than a um, like an RF resistor okay so that's that so the first thing that we do is we turn the, um, the radio, it doesn't matter on this because I'm using a dummy load, but if we were using a, a, an antenna, like we will be in a second, then it's important that we're, that we're tuning up on a frequency where nobody is. Okay, so the first thing I've done, I don't know if you can see this, but I've turned the power down. Okay, so there you go, so we're on five watts. This particular dummy load will handle up to 200, uh, sorry, 300 watts, but there's no reason to push it. Okay, next thing on the SWR meter, let's turn the scale down. Okay, so we've got three scales 5 watts, 20 watts, and 200 watts. So we've got it on 5 watts. So um, the other thing that we need to remember as well is that the radio needs to be on um, a mode that will actually emit a carrier. So FM, for instance, or even um, CW data. So when I key the microphone up this will actually put out um, a, a carrier into the SWR meter and then through the SWR meter to the dummy load and it will measure the the reflective power. So the first thing that we have to do is calibrate it okay so the way that we do that is we key the microphone and when I key the microphone with this switch in the forward position, this switch in the calibrate position and the scale set correctly, the needle will go across. And we're, we're going to be looking at this knob here to actually chew or calibrate the actual needle. So let's cue up the microphone and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, the needle is going not all the way to the end. So to calibrate it, 
we turn this knob until the needle goes to the very very end as you can see there okay that is perfect okay so now when we put this into the SWR position we will then see the meter read a value now for SWR purposes realistically anything below 2 which is here is good um, or acceptable let's say anything below 1.5 is great and the closer to 1 is, is perfect or the closer to 0 is perfect so let's have a look at this okay so the needle barely moves let's just zoom in okay so the needle barely moves obviously because we are using a 50, a 50 ohm dummy load okay now let's plug the antenna in and let's see what happens the simplest um, way of demonstrating this I'm using a mag mount on the metal table with a Diamond SG7900 or something like that okay let's have a look so first thing we do is calibrate it so we're on 5 watts still key the microphone turn the knob okay that's about perfect put it on SWR key the microphone okay so that's as good as yeah that's perfect one point one to one absolutely lovely now the um, some radios have got an SWR meter built into them so uh, this particular radio has okay let's have a look yep SWR meter on the radio is not even moving okay so that is how you um, measure the SWR now in addition to that if you are lucky enough to own an antenna analyzer which is one of these then I'll show you how this works uh, so let's just test let's test this mag mount right so the first thing we've got to do is change the frequency okay 113 to 170 okay that's where the two meter band sits so then we just turn this dial and you will see that the frequency will change uh, the SWR is here this is the resonance uh, sorry this is the resistance so we're looking for around about 50 ohms which is perfect okay so we're going up 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 coming up to 144 and you'll see that the needle dipped there okay so 137 it's around about 1.5 to 1 and then as we get closer to the 144 megahertz 145 megahertz um, frequency which is the frequency that the antenna is cut for it starts to dip which is what we would hope for so there you go that's how we use an antenna analyzer right so that was two meters um, so let's have a look at what our half wave end fed antenna looks like so this is the uh, the end of the coax the feeder as we call it let's plug that into our analyzer Now I'll just show you the uh, the end fed antenna and it literally is nothing more than a bit of wire supported by a fiberglass pole which is basically perched in this bush or tree okay so there's the top of the antenna and then the wire comes down here to to the 49 to 1 unon which is there and then the, the feeder goes off around the garden and then back to here right so let's have a look so we're hoping that this will be resonant on 20 meters so this is it's still set on two uh, two meters 144 ish so let's go to 20 meters 
Okay, so we're looking for around about 14.2 megahertz. Okay, so let's come down and then watching this needle here, hopefully when we get down to 14 point, let's say two, it will start to dip. Okay, and it's dipping far too late effectively, which means that the antenna is too long. So what I need to do is chop a bit off the antenna um, to make it resonant higher up the band, around there, okay? Okay, so it's starting to dip. We're below two, okay. There we go, so 1.7 to one at 14.2, and then going down towards FT8. Yeah, about 1.6 to one. That'll do nicely, sir. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, it's 7-3 from me.